Welcome to Jetworks Build Video Pilots, this is the McDonald F101 Voodoo. Before we get into it, let's have a look at Tobias Maiden. Fantastic flyer. Can't wait. So in this video, I use M77 spray, Yoohoo port, and 20 minute epoxy. So I've chosen to use the 70 millimeter using a free wing version. Here I've got the belly panel and the parts for the next couple of steps. On the plans, there is markings for um, attaching the bulkhead number two. So I've just put some indents in the belly panel with the end of a ruler. Bulkhead number one, small amount of Yuhu pour on the base and just offer it up to the belly panel, smudge it about so that there's a, a attacking base there. So the next step is bulkhead number two and the lower intake former. So again, just a small amount of glue, offer it up to the indents that I've previously marked. Attach bulkhead number one as I've let it air dry slightly. And then bulkhead number two as well. Small amount of Yoohoo on the lower former. And just slide that about so there's a nice, nice even spread. Next steps, the upper intake former and the corner reinforcers as well. It's quite simple, just again, small amount of glue and slide it into the slot on bulkhead number two. Just make sure everything's still in position. Then the lower corners, I'm just using a, a thin bead of glue along one of them, offering them up together and just smudging it about so there's a nice thin application on it. Once it gets a couple of minutes to air dry, just put them together using the template. I'm just now I'm trimming off the front markings and there's a rear marking there as well, so that when I offer it up to the fuselage, I can see how good a fit it is. So a wee test fit, offer it up, see how it looks. A wee bit of additional trim in there, just so it's nice and flush. Quite happy how that looks. Small amount of Yoohoo. Slide it about so there's a nice even application on it. Let it air dry slightly, then attach it. So in this video, um, do the same with the, the opposite side. And then the next step is the intake inners and the corner reinforcers at the front of the belly. So now that they've um, been cut, obviously there's a slight curve in it, so what I'm doing is just offering it up to the edge of the table, pulling it across to get that slight bend, just to get it as close to the shape as possible before we um, apply the glue. Quite happy how that is. And again with the opposite side, making sure it's the your curving the mirrored side of it. Look pretty well, quite happy at that. So a wee, wee, wee trim, looks pretty good. And then just um, again, some small amount of Yoohoo um, on the contact surfaces. Here I'm just putting a, a small bevel in that I forgot. Onto the front reinforcers again. I've actually Put the two of them together with spray M77 and then just using some Yoohoo to um, fit it to the, the belly panel. Here there's the a slight angle um, following on from bulkhead number two using that as a guide because the side panels fit um, attached to the corner reinforcers, not actually the belly panel itself. So just eyeballing it, this is how I've done it. Um, using a sharp blade, and just be careful with a sharp blade, and get it to come along the same angle. Just trim away just small pieces to get the same sort of angle as bulkhead number two, and obviously bulkhead number one as well, because that's where it starts. 
So as you can see, it's just a small amount that I'm trimming off just to get the angles that I'm looking for. Next step is fitting the EDF bulkheads and the 3D printed intake. So it was a wee bit fiddly um, for myself, but here I'm using the free wing 70mm unit that I had spare lying about. Personally, it, it will fly, but um, I would like to have had the FMS unit there to put in it. I love the, the, the power produced by these. So here I've got the the foam and um, bulkheads, just test fit it, make sure it's it's good. Lining it up to the belly panel and seeing that the the corners are all nice and even and nice and flush. Quite happy with how they are. And then fitting in the EDF unit itself, making sure that the, the front of the housing is nice and flat. Small amount of glue where the bulkheads are due to meet. Line it up and slot it into place. And then I'll use some hot glue to um, attach it and make sure that the EDF unit is attached to the bulkhead itself, nice and solid. Here, just slight trim as, as I wasn't happy that it was absolutely flat and flush to the belly plate. So just in with a wee blade and just give it a wee trim. And then using a hot glue gun, just secure the back of the, the bulkhead as well to the EDF unit. Now on to the 3D printed intake. Looks absolutely fantastic. And it was, it was a wee bit fiddly for myself because we have the um, supports for that as well. They just sort of slot over it. So here I've got a wee bit of Yoohoo onto the contact surfaces on, on the flange ring for the front of the EDF housing and offered it up just so there's a wee bit of glue on both contact surfaces and then just allowing it to air dry slightly. Small amount on the, the belly panel there where we're about to attach the um, supports. Now these supports have been printed in lightweight PLA. I think I've got two walls and about maybe 15% infill on it. There's no harm in trying it for, for myself. Um, I like to test the lightweight PLA even when it comes to the structural parts. I've not had anything fail on me yet. But, um, you know, if, if I can stay away from the trees long enough, then hopefully the um, lightweight supports um, will, will manage to see me through. So here, like I say, it was a wee bit tricky, a wee bit fiddly for myself, just making sure that it's lined up to the mouth of the EDF unit. And then just apply a small amount of glue. Um, I'm using Yuhu here. Obviously slotted into the belly panel, which has given us the angles. So here I'm thinking um, it needs a wee bit extra support. So just getting a, a wee bit of fibre tape. Just cut a wee slot and while the glue's on there, just push it together. A wee bit of tape on it, help it um, set where um, it's, it's a, well, I'd like it to. So the next step is the exhaust bulkhead and again the 3D printed ducts. Um, these um, ducts and designs and intakes and everything that Craig's producing, absolutely stunning. Now, it's not um, a requirement for any of the builds, you know, they can all be done with um, foam alone. However, like I was saying earlier, I like to test all the um, lightweight PLA parts um, and it's, it's a fantastic scale they can finish. Certainly I'd rather use um, a, an exhaust duct than making um, you know, my own with um, plastic and stuff. So here we just test fit the rear bulkhead into the exhaust, add a small amount of Yoohoo onto the flange and offer it up to the rear of the bulkheads, just so that there's glue on both sides. Allow it to air dry slightly and then a small amount of glue at the back where we'll attach the, the bulkhead itself. Again, just offering it up. Now this video has been sped up um, four times, so I think the total build time for this was about four and a half hours. Um, obviously while editing the, the video I've cut some of the um, drinking coffee out and stuff, 
But here, um, all, all in all, you're looking at about four hours for the, the build, which I think is absolutely fantastic. So you're off and all, I'm just making sure that the, the flange um, from the exhaust is, is flush against the EDF unit itself. Now for the ESC tray and the upper corner reinforcers. So again, just take the ESC tray, ESC tray, excuse me, um, offer it up and just just for a wee test fit, make sure you're happy with everything. Once you're good with that, again, small amount of yoo -hoo or whatever glue it is you choose to use. Just on the contact surfaces where everything's going to meet. Give a wee smudge about so there's a nice thin application. And then just offer it up in place. Here I'm actually using some model pins. Um, I'm not actually too sure the right name for them, but I've seen... Um, few builds done with these and that obviously it helps hold things in place while the glue is drying. It is contact glue so if you have a wee bit more patience than me when it comes to building and, and give it the required air time then there's no need for these. So the next step in the guide is to attach the fuselage sides. So here on the plans there was a, um, a a slot missing for the rear bulkhead. I've let Craig know, give him a wee heads up about this, um, but it was quite an easy resolve by using the, the templates for the EDF bulkheads itself um, and just offering it up to the side panel and cutting out the additional slot. So here we put a small amount of Yoohoo pour along the contact surfaces, offered up the side panel and then again I'm using some modelling pins just to hold it into place. Small amount of glue on the exhaust bulkhead that I forgot. And just as you're working away from um, the, the rear to the front, just make sure you've got the nice fit in place where you want it to be. And again, the side panels don't get attached to the um, belly plate itself. It's actually glued against the the side reinforcers. So moving along to the front, once I attached it um, there, I'm quite happy with the position, just made sure that the belly panel was squeezed into line where I want it, and adding some pins. I actually quite like these. seen Christopher Beckwith using them so thanks Chris it certainly helps my build along um, in, in terms of speed so once you're happy with the fit again um, same same process on the opposite side offer up some um, Yoohoo pour on the contact surfaces then attach the the, bell, uh, the side panel so the next step in the guide is the vertical stabiliser Here I'm just trimming out the slot for the 1mm carbon spar and then I'll cut it to fit. And then using 3M77 spray I'll spray the 3mm outer part and then attach that to the side and flip it over before I apply some glue. So I'll use the 20 minute epoxy, just a small, small amount Give it a good mix and then offer it up to the slot itself where the one millimeter spar is going to go. Now just be careful when you get to the top there's a gap underneath where the um, supports go so just make sure you don't fill it all the way along and I'm just using a small amount on the end where that space would be and then just clean it up with a scrap piece of foam. So next step is the elevator supports. Again, I've printed everything out in lightweight PLA. Hopefully it'll work. So a small amount of you pour on the, the skid runner plate. Test fit, pushing it through. And then I just applied a small amount of you onto the contact surfaces. Obviously avoiding the gaps there. Once happy that that's there, flip it over and then add the swing arm. This is where the vertical stabiliser will attach. 
So at this part, I was kind of confused as to where I'm going to offer up the skid on the opposite side. So just gambled it, put a wee bit of glue on it, sprayed some M77 on the opposite side of the 3mm Depron sheet. Some glue in there for the, the support piece. Put it together. Now on to the boom bases. Quite simple. Um, the, the both parts cut out small amount of yuhu pour along each each contact surface, and then just offer it up, slide it into place, and just allow it to dry. Once you're quite happy with that, just set it to the side, and now to attach it. So I just had a wee test fit to make sure I was quite happy with it first and then I put some Yoohoo pod on it. As you can see I was kind of flicking about through um, the build guide there just to see next steps and things as to how I'm going to move forward with the, the build. And then along the contact surfaces for the, the rear of the side panels just a small amount of glue on the, the boom bases that were just attached. And then again, I'm using my modelling pins just to hold it. Other models that I've built prior to this, I used to use um, some masking tape just to hold it into place. It is contact glue again. You know, if you give it a required amount of air time just to dry before you attach it, you, you'll get that good bond straight away. But me being me, I'm just using the modelling pins and sticking it together and moving on to the next step as quick as I can. So once you're happy with that, looks looks pretty good, um, nice and solid there as well. Make sure it's all squeezed into place and then just allow it to dry. So the next step was the upper forward reinforcers in the middle. For some reason I haven't caught that on the video but it's, it's pretty simple enough to do yourselves. The bridge panel upper and the canopy support pieces again um, is the next step. So. Again, small amount of glue, just give it a wee smudge about. There is centre lines marked on the, the plans, um, advising people to use these. Me being me, I just you know eyeball it, offer it up, and then stick them in place, obviously giving them um, a bit of air time in between each. What I'm doing is using a, a nice sharp blade, again be careful, and just trimming away just the bits at the side to make sure it's a nice flat surface that the um, front pieces are going to attach to so that there's a good even application of glue along the contact surfaces. A wee bit you hoo smudge it about and um, let it air dry, give it some contact time. And then on to the canopy support piece. So just putting that into place, just marking where I'm going to apply the glue so that I'm not going over it. Good to be smudge about. Again, giving it a bit of air time. So once you have that air time, um, you, you do get a good contact as soon as it goes down and it pretty much sticks. But again, I'm just using a wee modelling pin just to make sure it's in place and it doesn't slide at all. So the next step is the, the wings itself, installing the carbon spars, etc. So here I've actually um, measured them out that the 31.6, sorry, 31 um, centimetres for the 6 millimetre carbon spar. And I think going back there it might have been 12, 12 centimetres for the carbon slot um, the flat bar so on the the presentation side of the wings what I'm doing is just taping it up the the slots where I'm about to remove the inner pieces and this tape that I'm using seems to be a lot tackier than stuff that I've used before can be a bit of a pain sometimes having to pick it out Whereas if you've got a nice low tack masking tape, then you know these parts will come out pretty much um, just as soon as you, you pull at them. So once I've trimmed it off, 
measure out the required amount of um, epoxy and here I'm using about 20 millimeters however I've added some micro balloons just to um, fill it up it if, obviously it helps reduce the weight I've just started using this and getting getting the hang of it um, obviously increases the volume of the glue as well so I do have some left over for this so I think possibly about 10 millimeters would be more than enough of um, epoxy if you're using micro balloons as well and then just to offer it up to the slots so we put in the one millimeter carbon spar a wee bit extra on the top just to make sure there's a nice even cone now, um, you can use um, some, again, low-tack masking tape at each side of this just to ensure, you know, you've got a nice nice clean finish and the, you're moving away any excess. You know, I'm scraping away at it here with some um, scrap masking tape. Um, but if you use the, the tape at both sides, it certainly gives you a cleaner finish. Because this is the underside of the wing, I'm not really too... I'm too bothered in all honesty. At the end of the day, this is certainly not going to be a showroom model. I'm going to take it out and I'm going to fly it. So once you've got it in the the space for the carbon spars, just be sure to smoothen it out um, to the edges so that you get a nice contact around um, each of the surfaces and you try not to leave any air gaps on the, on the opposite side. Again, using a scrap piece of foam, just clean away any of the excess glue that's there. As you can see in my wee pot, I do have a small amount of epoxy left there. We clean up and then just allow it to dry and, and let the glue set. So now that that's done, we're going to remove the tape and we've got a lovely, lovely nice flat finish. What I'm doing here is attaching the aileron, so I'm just using a 3mm um, piece of foam, just measuring up the centre line on both so that when I get to trimming it and adding the um, hinges, it's, it's going to be nice nice and, and even. So here I'm just using the, the blade to get a, a wee bevel cut, 45 degree hopefully. A wee trim at the side just so that there's um, nice nice free movement. And I've actually printed some hinges and TPU, um, flexible flexible plastic. Pretty good, um, simple, cheap and easy. Um, there is plenty of methods out there for using hinges. I love Craig's ones that are, are linked together, attached to both the wing and the, the aileron control surface itself. However, um, we, we, I do need to try these things out and see how, how they go. Like I say, it's a flexible TPU, um, so um, it's cheap, very cheap. Um, it took about three minutes to print off these wee tabs. So once we've um, marked it out, where we want to go, offered it up to the wing itself um, and just marked where each slot's going to go. And then do the same again on the opposite side by using the centre line that we drew with the 3mm piece of foam it's given us the, the guide, you can eyeball it but it gives you a, a better guide as to where to add the slots so that you're in the middle of the, the wing itself offer up to the, the wing and then I just mark it on the wing plate itself where I'm going to be adding um, the slots on the wing so that we're not cutting more than we need to. Again, just be careful when you're using sharp blades here. Or make sure you've got plasters. Small amount of glue on the, the hinges itself. And then just slot it into position. Works pretty well. So the next step is the assembling the aileron linkage so I have on the, the left of the screen there I have one already pre-made now here using the the small um, linkages that Craig provides on the plans I'm using a, a one millimeter um, piano wire just feeding it through to make sure there's nice free movement on on both the outer parts
once I've twisted it and got it through and you're quite happy with it, slide it all the way through and then using a carbon rod, what I'll do is just use a small amount of um, CA glue, some contact adhesive. Not a lot in that ball, need to get another one. So just the, the end of the rod, and watch your fingers, it is contact adhesive. Just dip it onto the CA glue and then slide it onto the rod. Wasn't quite happy that it was centered as, as best as I could. So when I tried to just move it into place, it, it kind of broke free. So again, just another wee dab. And then do a better job this time. Offer it up to the middle. And if it wasn't absolutely in the middle, well, it's going on the plane anyway. Be yeah, happy with that. And then slide it through so that we're ready to put on the the other opposite end. Just try to make sure you you don't get any um, CA on the the rod itself, which can be a wee bit of a challenge. If I was to do this again, there, 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 there is a small bit of flex um, when you're using this design um, for the aileron linkages. I think even if I was to use a, maybe a, a 2mm or 3mm um, push rod, there, there will still be um, an element of flex. And apologies here that you know some, some of it is quite off the, the camera. Just the camera angle is not actually quite right. But that's what happens when you've got overhead camera and you're just cracking on building. You know, and you tend not to go back to the camera and check. Well, I tend not to. So once that's through and you're happy that both ends are stuck, um, it's time to just um, do your Z-bends on each side and make sure it kind of um, levels up to your control arm, the, the right length. And then again the opposite side. So you can see here on the wings I've, uh, I've attached them. I put them in with um, some epoxy. And there's a Z-bend on the left hand side. I've measured that up with the, the servo arm. And then you can see on the aileron side itself that it's um, I've got a, a marking on the wing plate where I'll apply a small amount of, of glue also just to fix them into place. You see there, there is a small gap, small air bubble, and, and well, two air bubbles there. That can be quite easily remedied with some filler when it comes to finishing the model. But the reason for that, I was um, kind of keen to make sure there was no additional epoxy um, went out with the, the measurements of the carbon rod there. So once you've measured it up, you've got your EZ bend the same length as your control arm. So offer it up and slide it into position. It did fit pretty well. However, I'm just going to um, trim up a wee bit on the, the wing plate itself just to allow a, a wee bit of relief for the, the servo wires itself. Now when you're pushing it in, just make sure that the screw on the servo arm um, itself is, is centralised to the rod so that it's, um, it runs flush along it. As you can see there's a small bit of flex, but it's not an issue. I don't think, um, like I saying on this swallow it's the same sort of design and the swallow flies fantastic. You've seen Tobias's model flying as well um, and this one's going to hit the skies pretty soon. So again just like, like we did um, on the one side of the wing, just over at the second side do the exact same. Um, you know, get your um, the wee Z bend into your control arm on the servo and line it up so that the screws um, nice and level with the carbon rod itself and centered. 
Now, in the, the plans, there's um, it asks you to use um, three millim three millimeter ply, a wooden wooden support. Uh, what I've actually done is just used um, some some foam, um, some spare Depron foam that I had, and and glued that with some hot glue over the top of the the servo arms. Uh, sorry, the servos itself, just to secure them in place. So here, where I had marked on the wing, where the the um, the push rod goes. I just cut a small relief so that getting the the wire down, the piano wire down to as close to centre of the wing as possible. Just a small relief. Mix up a wee bit of epoxy again. Slide it into um, place, just where you're going to put the the control arm. And I did cut a wee extra slot in there, so that when we push the control arm in, it gets to, like I say, as, as close to the centre of the the aileron itself, the control surface. Just smoothing out some glue over the top, just to make sure that it's not just on the bottom, but it covers the top of the, the control arm itself. And then just allow the epoxy to set. So moving on to the next step, like I was saying, is the the underside and the, and the top side supports. As you can see here, I've just used some um, scrap pieces of foam, hot glued them into place, and that just secures the servo um, itself. Maybe a bit of drama getting it out if the servo fails, but let's see how this one goes. So attaching the wing now. What I'm doing is just using a small piece of string um, and pushing it through from the top to the bottom so that I'm not trying to find the, the channel to get the servo arms going upwards. Servo arms, sorry, the servo cable. So just using the string, just loosely tie on um, to the end of the servo cable and just pull it up and through. Offering it up to the slots just for a wee sort of test fit and yeah it, I was surprised how well it actually fitted so again mix up a, a small amount of epoxy and where the the slots are where the wing um, is due to meet the bulkheads on, on both the intake and the EDF bulkheads I'm just using a small amount of epoxy on both sides just to cover the contact surfaces and then again slot it back into position Tidy up the wire and then do the same um, on the opposite wing. Again, wee bit of tape, pull it through, some epoxy on the contact surfaces. And then slide the wing into position. Tidy up, push the cable through, ready for the next step. Before we went on to the next step, was adding um, a small amount of glue along the, the side panel and I chose to use some hot glue. So the next step is testing out the electronics. So hooking up the ESC just to make sure that we have the, the right polarity and it's not um, pushing back, uh, forwards, um, it's actually pushing the air out the back. So hooking it up to um, the receiver and then attaching the ailerons I'm using channel 1 and channel 5 I think it was just so the ailerons are working independently and I may very well add a, a flapper on mix to it later so again I'm testing out using the throttle I'm making sure that we're moving it in the, the right direction it wasn't it was pulling um, pushing the air forward so just using two of the wires for the ESC just swap two of them any two it doesn't matter which and this just ensures that you're blowing the air out in the right direction and your jet's going to go forward. So on the tail piece here, um, in the servo slot, just applying a small amount of glue and then offering up the elevator servo. Tucking in the wires, hooking that up to the, the servo itself. Sorry, the receiver. Next step is the fuselage sides outer. 
So again, using um, 3M77 spray, just a quick spray on the, the side itself. Offer it up to the side panel where it should be going. Using the tip of the tail point as a reference and the, the slots itself um, on the front, uh, in front of the EDF housing, there's wee slots there using both as a reference just to make sure that they're both lined up to where they should be and then the forward side panels as well again the, um, you can see there's two slots um, on there for where your intake goes so I've sanded it um, to get it nice and flat so there's a nice smooth transition going into the EDF and then again, small amount of um, M77 spray, and then just offer it up. Sticks very well, this glue. Again, the opposite side, just offer it up. We press and push it into place, and that's it. Just allow it to dry. Just making sure that the, the back ends were all nice and tight and um, adhered to the side. Um, and we're, oh, I was absolutely happy with that. Just allow it to dry. And then I'm just checking the, the servo arm at the elevator there just to make sure there's enough free movement. Next step is to get on with the fuselage tops, the inner and the middle. So now that all the wiring and the electronics is in, I'm happy that it's all been tested. Then it's just a wee test fit for the, the inner part. Make sure it meets up to the slots pretty well. Goes along the, the tail boom nice and even as well. Quite happy with that. So again, just carefully remove it because the, the tail pieces are quite thin. And then just apply um, a thin amount of yu along the contact surfaces. I will say, you know, on, on this part, just make sure that it is nice and flat contact surfaces whether you use a sanded block to make sure it's nice and um, level so that you get a good adhesion um, so when it comes to sanding later on in the build then you're not going to be missing some um, slots where the glue is probably not taken to it so once we put the yuho on offer that up into place and then just slide it in and make sure it's you know you've got a nice fit Again, I'm just using some modelling pins. Again, on the other side at the tail boom. Can't actually see it here, but I'm just pushing it into the slot itself. On the side panels, just so it's, it's, it's nice and flush. And again, just working from the back to the front. A couple of modelling pins just to make sure it's nice and nice and even. Once you're happy with that, the next step is to use the, the middle one. So what I'm doing is just putting a small amount of yu along the vertical stabilizers. And then I will use some 3M77 spray for the, the underside of the middle part. Because when it comes to sanding this again later on, um, you who can be quite rubbery um, and not not the best to sand whereas the M77 spray you get a fantastic adhesion there's um, providing it's a light misting that you put across it a great adhesion sticks very well and when it comes to sanding you're not left with um, rubbery residues that you're um, fighting on your sandpaper with So again, just sliding it into place. Move it, move a wee modelling pin out of the way. Twist the T piece around about, and then just level it up. Once it's onto the um, stabilizers itself, just level it up, level it up into um, position, making sure that the holes that are already pre-cut are just kind of aligned with each other. Just a light, light press um, down onto the next part. Obviously, I've got some yuho there in the vertical stabilizer, and then just pressing it in a position, and then on to the next step, using some yuho just along the vertical stabilizer, so that when we add the the top piece, there's a nice good bond along the tail itself. 
So I've just applied some spray M77 to the underside of it and slide it into position. So now that the fuse lash tops on, we'll get the canopy support number two piece in as well. So again, just to offer up, nice tight fit. A wee bit of Yoohoo on both opposite ends, and then again, a wee spray of light M77. On at the top piece, but before we do that, add some Velcro. Canopy support number three, and then the nose cone itself. So like we have done with the other parts, light spray of M77 and put it into place. So here just putting the nose cone liner in, some Yoohoo around the, the surface and then just spread it out so we've got a nice, nice even application. Next step is the 3D printed intakes. So on the slots just underneath the side panels and where they're marked on the, the fuse last side itself, a small amount of Yoohoo on the, the contact surfaces. Let's give it a wee bit of time to air dry and then slot that in into position as well. So here we have the the top um, fuse lash sides itself. And a bit of glue along the contact surfaces. And then just give it a wee rub together both sides just so there's a nice, nice even application offer it into place. If it's a time to air dry it should stick pretty well. No need for modelling pins here. Next step is the lower intake cowlings and the tail boom piece as well. So just trimming up the, the side parts just to get that angle so that when the, it meets up against the, the fuselage sides we've got a nice, nice good bond. Adding the small um, supports, bit of glue and just trim it away. Again, using a small amount of glue on the contact surfaces. We trim up after the test fit. And then onto the tail boom, just trimming the, the angled parts again, just making sure that you're using it as the, the mirrored pieces. And then a small amount of glue. Offer it up in place. Yeah, we smudge about so it's nice and sticky. Give it a wee bit of time to air dry and then just push it into place and it will stick pretty well. Happy with the fit there. And then the tail, obviously, it's just moving off screen here, but like we do with all the, the small 3mm um, parts, small amount of glue and just offer it up both sides. Slide it into position. And it fits pretty well. Again, sorry that it's just off, off camera shot here, but I'm sure you understand the process here, just putting in the 3mm supports. We test fit the exhaust, and then I'm just marking it up so that when it comes to sanding later on, I'm not sanding too far and have to fill it. Next step is the upper and lower nacelles. So here, um, the 3D printed pieces, these could quite easily be done with the 3mm ply, sorry, the 3mm um, Depron as well. And then the lower pieces. Moving on to the elevators. So here I've got the the rods and I've bent the 4mm screws. Now that it's done, um, I've marked it up at 15 degrees angle. I think ideally you should be looking about 10 degrees. 15 actually looks not too bad, but I think um, looking at the scale pictures, it's actually more along the lines of um, maybe 10 to 12 degrees. So using a wee bit of epoxy, um, just putting it into place and then sizing it up against the elevator surfaces and like we do with the wing just tape it up first so that when you put in the the carbon spars 
in the epoxy you've got a nice wee channel there for it so again just using a wee bit of epoxy and some micro balloons just be careful that you don't put in too much and it spills out try and keep some away from the the outer surface there and just eyeballing it having it nice nice and level get it as as level as you can um, at 90 degrees here when it comes to attaching it to the stabilizer it's quite simple enough to try and get it um, level to where you want it to be allow the epoxy to set and then when we're applying um, some glue for the control horn for the the rear elevator I'm using hot glue here and just a wee 3D printed um, control horn. Obviously you can use 3mm um, ply and just make sure it's not perpendicular to the wing. Um, it's actually, there's a slight angle on it. Offer it up to the housing and then again test the control surface. Once you're happy that the control surfaces are working fine, it's time to epoxy the elevator into the, the stabiliser itself. Unfortunately, pilots, I don't have the the video for this for some reason. But what I will say is, obviously, you will epoxy in one side, let that um, set, and then move on to the other side and epoxy that, and and just making sure that both of them are level, um, and you've got that nice um, ten to fifteen degrees angle. Going to the elevator it's itself in terms of the the threaded four millimeter bar just be mindful that the housing itself is about 14 millimeters wide so your end piece um, once you've got it set into the the stabilizer itself and um, the elevator sorry just make sure that you've not got too much of a threaded bar at the end you want it nice and even so that you can get um, both of them to fit nice and flush in the middle not have too much excess so pilots, I hope that's helped, helped you for those who are, are looking to build the Voodoo. I found the build guide very, very easy. In all honesty, once I'd read through it a couple of times, and I will take the opportunity to apologise that I've not followed it step by step. You know, I've missed out the sanding parts and things. There may have been a couple of other parts that um, were not... In, in line with how the build guide is set out however i just have a look at it and see how it suits me suits my build style um, and like i say i hope it's helped um you guys whoever it is that chooses to build the the voodoo and a huge thanks to craig for the designs the awesome jets and also tobias um he he's to blame for this because when i seen his um video of his his maidens it looks fantastic as much as he needs paint on them um, it looks fantastic it looks fast and it flies fast so uh, i certainly can't wait to made in mine and when i do and i manage to stay away from the trees i'll certainly um, upload some footage for you guys so once again thanks if you managed to stay this long in the video hope i've not bored you um, and it's helped some who may possibly choose to build the voodoo thanks again guys until next time i'd like to wish you blue skies and calm winds take care